Another major issue for entrepreneurs is access to capital. We know that I think less than 1% goes to black businesses. So what are some steps that um, you guys are doing to kind of correct that issue, which suffocates a lot of businesses from getting started or from expanding? So here's where I come to this point. It, none of us have achieved success without support. None of us. And without someone or, or people who understood our talent and our dreams and encouraged us to achieve it and showed us how to achieve it. And as much as anything, the spirit behind the push for access to capital, and in particular on this tour, focusing on minority small businesses and black owned small businesses and small businesses and, and entrepreneurs who are black men, is to recognize the disparities that have existed around the access to the opportunity to achieve success. Again, I will say because success is almost always a function of some investment from a community or others that went into the individual who then achieves success. So the access to capital push that we have made has been about, yes, getting more federal dollars into community banks. It has been about getting the private sector and the big banks to invest uh, because they will admit and we know they are not necessarily in the place where they are, where we need them to be situated to know the community. Access to capital is, uh, encompasses a, a commitment to also making sure that we are doing the teaching to then create the access to markets. So it's about financial literacy. A lot of what we talked about before around helping people know how to start a business and keep a business going. And it's also about understanding that our small, you know, I know I use, I interchange the word entrepreneur and small business. I, I think basically, depending on the generation, someone considers themselves an entrepreneur <laughs> in terms of younger small businesses, but it's all entrepreneurship, right? Um, what we also know is that our entrepreneurs, our small business owners, are not only leaders in business, but community leaders, civic leaders, hiring locally, mentoring, creating opportunities for economic development and growth within individuals and communities. So the work we are doing to extend access to capital is about tapping into the ambition that exists, the aspirations that exist, and then giving people the, the resources that are necessary, money and other resources to actually achieve success. Can you talk a little bit about how you all achieved your success and how this kind of approach would lend itself to to others having a story similar to yours? Um, yeah, you know, we started with an iPhone and I did. That's, that's what we always say, that we, we didn't have any capital when we started, right? Um, and that's the beauty of social media. Technology has really empowered everybody and kind of leveled the playing field. But what we're seeing is that when we're interviewing, you know, other entrepreneurs, that may not have the same business model as us, mm -hmm. they have an extremely difficult time. Mm -hmm. And especially when we look at the next generation of unicorn companies, yeah. billion dollar, multi-billion dollar companies, those are mostly tech companies and you do need a lot more money to start a tech That's company. Right. So I feel like the entrepreneur in Morehouse and Spellman, they have just as good ideas as Mark Zuckerberg and, and Jeff Bezos. Yeah but they don't have the capital. Right. So they either abort those ideas or they work for mm -hmm. those companies. But even that's an issue because we know that we are not hired at the same rate in Silicon Valley as other people as well, right? So mm -hmm. even talking to Robert Smith and a lot of other people like that, this is a very um, complex problem. But I think from our perspective, we have a unique perspective because we actually get to talk to entrepreneurs every single day yeah. and we can understand how $100,000 could just accelerate their business, right? $50,000 can accelerate their business, right? And even looking in the crowd, we have entrepreneurs. I see Pinky Cole, I see Eastside Golf. And yeah. these are young entrepreneurs that went out on the limb and bet on their self, right? But 
a little bit more capital, they can be the next McDonald's. That's they right. could be the next Nike, right? And that's, that's what right. we need in our community so they can employ. That's right. So they can employ not just 100 people, but 100,000 people. That's right. And that you, you hit it on the head in terms of how we feel about this. Um, this is, you know, they, yes, there are going to be those who need $20,000 loans, but folks need million dollar loans, <laughs> right? And, and when we talk about a small business, it, it, it will be, it could be a dozen employees, but it could also be 200 employees. And it, it is that piece of it that is about getting to that next plateau. That is very much how I'm thinking about this tour and the work that we are doing. So yes, it's about startup capital, but also what is required then to grow and to scale and have it be sustainable. One of the pieces I, I failed to mention before, but I'll mention now is the president and I, when we first came in, made a commitment um, that we are going to increase by 50% the number of federal contracts going to minority owned businesses. And we're on track to get that done. So part of the point of this tour has been to give folks information about how you apply for a federal contract. The reason that we made that commitment is because we then put in place more information that is available to more people about how to get a federal contract because a lot of that historically has been who you know. And when you get a federal contract, it is potentially yours for life. Mm -hmm and is very sustainable and can be the source of great growth for that individual who owns that business and, and beyond. I'll also say this, and I was saying it to a few folks earlier, the work that we have accomplished as an administration, be it the infrastructure bill and what we are doing to invest, it'll be trillions of dollars in infrastructure, roads, bridges, sidewalks, all of that, transportation, public transportation. What we have done with the, with the, um, the, the CHIPS and Science Act, which is about investment in technology and research and development. What we are doing with the Inflation Reduction Act, which is about at least a trillion dollars invested in the climate, but a clean energy economy. One of, the, one of the compelling reasons for me to start this tour now and to ask all the leaders here for help in getting the word out about what is available to entrepreneurs and small businesses is because we are in the process of putting a lot of money in the streets of America for this growth. And we want to make sure everyone has access to the opportunity to take advantage of the contracts and the work that is being generated by this policy push. And so we want to make sure people know about it and then know where they can receive the support to be ready to take on the work and then to grow their capacity. I was very surprised to learn that over 70% of construction companies in America, and I'm pretty sure that number is still correct, 70% of construction companies in America employ 20 or fewer people. Those are small businesses, right? Who, when we're building back up America's infrastructure, a lot of that is construction work. Got to make sure people know about what's available to them to actually take those jobs. 